do like this, they do like that. Bam, bam, bam. Hi, welcome back. Today, we're going to learn something called wet on wet. Now that I think of it, what exactly is it? Hmm. Imagine a wet surface and you just applied a lot of wet paint. That's all. That's all it is. Wet on wet. So when you apply wet paint on a wet surface, that's it. So first, it gives you a softness. It gives you a soft feeling to your painting. It'll look like it's kind of foggy or hazy if you're using it for landscapes. The main thing in wet and wet is you'll have soft edges unless once dried you would like to apply some more coats on top. You can actually use it for basically anything. Alright, let's go! Alright, let's start the drawing process. Well, you know what? We don't even have to draw. Take a look. So we have um, a cut piece of a pomegranate and a whole one. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you basically the simplified version of wet and wet, but not necessarily a very simple painting. So you have to pay attention from the beginning. All right, so I'm just trying to mix the colors. Now it's going to be uh, quite random in terms of colors, but I will try to keep the colors accurate to the pomegranate and before we start the painting we have to apply water now take a look this is just plain water I'm trying to rub it up thing is when you apply plain water you just have to be careful in terms of how much to apply and that's the thing in wet and wet if it is quite wet will it work if it is quite dry will it work so the ratio should be basically wet mm, imagine if you have the brush dipped in the water completely whatever water it picked just use it in the initial process now you can you can just uh, you know uh, rub it up across the entire page and then you can primary uh, you can primarily work on your main subject so okay let's take a look here, I'm trying to mix the colors, so the paper is getting uh, damp a little bit, so which is good. But if it is moist, maybe on a semi-dry level, the wet and wet technique might not work. So you have to be careful. Applying water back again. So now, as you can see, the paper is getting wet entirely and in fact, I can say the paper must be 80% damp now. So that means we are good to go. You know, I could have actually skipped this particular part and I would have just done a time lapse on this that I just spread the paper but you know what you need to see real time now see this that's just plain gamboge yellow you can use anything you have Indian yellow uh, it depends because brand to brand the yellows might change so you can use whatever you have I'm just using gamboge yellow added it entirely now it's quite diluted so it's spreading but it's not quite heavy pigment very important now, as it is spreading around, I picked a round brush around 10. That's heavy vermilion red. Look at this. There we go. And see, pay attention to the red and see how much they actually spread. So you must be thinking how thick the paint is. It's quite thick, direct from the tube, applied on the palette, mixed well with the brush and applied on the subject. So they are trying to blend themselves. Now this is quite an abstract uh, still life that I'm trying to show. So I'm not paying attention to 
extreme lighting or extreme uh, tonal values or anything extreme because you need to see how wet on wet process looks look at the way they blend look at the way now that's dark pigment mixed with brown so vermilion plus burnt sienna see how they blend this entire painting is going to be 95% approximately on wet and wet maybe 5% detailing I'll do afterwards so now I'm just trying to add some more pigment dark pigment here and there and I'm letting them do the thing watercolor is brilliant when you do not try to control especially if you're not trying to do any realistic work let them do let them have fun I'm waiting and I'm trying to see there we go now I'm adding a little bit of cool color for the surface where the pomegranates are look at the way they go down quite dreamy quite uh, gloomy and they're mixing well so we have warm color and we also have cool colors it's a brilliant combination now look at look at the way they they, they move they, they move very slowly you know what you can tamper you can actually add more pigment on top maybe you can add more water on top but you know what you lose track of what you are trying to memorize by learning these kind of steps there is no point doing those things so just keep on adding that's what I'm trying to do so now I'm just trying to add some color over here which will act like a medium tonal value and also it will try to give some more dimension to the pomegranate the pomegranate is quite tricky it looks like an apple right now but you know what let it be I'm going to do some designs on top once the entire painting is dried up so I'm just having fun all you have to do is see see things observe you know that half of your painting can be done if you just make the painting in your mind try to visualize try to see how it might turn up on the paper and if you can do that which will take a long time because that is something you should practice everybody should practice I do I'm pretty sure many great artists they must be doing it I'm pretty sure they do it because that is something you just do it because what else will you do now you have to tell a story you have to make connections big shapes smaller ones the medium ones uh, the technicalities of watercolor quite important quite nice because it's a brilliant medium I love it and uh, I'm just trying to show you so pay attention to the bloom effect how dreamy and blended they look now here I'm thinking to add let me see hmm okay all right let's go yellow 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 it's a mix of chrome yellow or gamboge I'm using gamboge whatever you can use you have no issues I'm using a uh, yellow with a little bit of burnt sienna just like this just to create that uh, abstract effect of the top there we go in the meantime take a look on that cut piece right there look at that brown in the middle how it's blending now I'm gonna add some texture just like this because I have to do the red fruit seeds, seedsies also. Just trying to create the big huge cut piece over here. Everything is wet and wet. There is nothing that I'm doing on dry. Nothing wet on dry. Everything is wet on wet. 
expect because I really don't care. They will definitely turn up nice and if they don't, I'll just throw the painting and I'll try to make a new one. Now, for me, they look quite okay. Lots of reds, here and there, brown, blue, orange, yellow, look at that. The first essential technique that any artist should learn is to experiment. Because if you don't experiment, how would you know? So, I know watercolor is costly, papers are costly, you can't spend too much time, but if you don't, then you cannot expect to have results. So don't worry, take small pieces, like um, A5 or so, and practice, then graduate to A4, then graduate to A3, A2, then absolutely the full sheet. Why not? Look at this. Now I'm going to do the background. So what I'll do is, I'll have a flowy effect, basically. Hard to describe that. So just take a look, adding water, softening the edges, just like this. I don't like hard edges too much personally, that's my opinion. But you should have hard edges and soft edges everywhere, here and there depending upon the situation, depending upon the subject, depending upon the atmosphere you're trying to build, the mood you're trying to depict, the lighting, there are a lot of things. But you know what? That's okay, that's not really important as of now. The main thing is to have a cool background. Look at that. I like it. It's quite warm and they fade, so I don't have to worry about making it quite darker because I am not. And okay for me. Here we go might think you know that just looks white yeah it does for me it's good now look at the way it came into the pomegranate creating automatically a new texture which I really love it I'm not gonna do much there maybe I'll take a tissue and should I lift some paint no I am not going to do it so yeah let it drip. In the meantime, I'm gonna add some over here. Now turn it up. Let's see. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I love it. Next, a little bit of texturing here and there. I'm trying to make some detailing as you can see. Dark values. Quite dark. Connections. And you know what? Now I should just let it dry, I guess. Too much work will ruin your painting. Remember, in watercolor, Try not to do too much. Less is more. Obviously, eventually, while practicing a lot, you'll get to a point, a certain point, where you'll realize, you know what, I should stop. And a lot of painting, a lot of paintings, basically, they just go bad because we try to overdo them. So, let them be. Have fun. You have to be confident to get more confident works. You just have to be patient and relaxed. You will get demoralized if, it, if it's not going to work. Any of your painting that you're trying to do happens to me too, but that's okay. Keep on learning, keep on practicing. Look at that. A little wet on dry, like I said, just to make some changes, highlights maybe. Maybe uh, what I'm going to do is, once the painting is entirely dried up, I'm going to add a couple of highlights. Other than that, I'm not going to touch it. Quite abstract, quite beautiful, quite dreamy, quite bloomy, quite reddy, quite yellowy. I don't know. I'm not getting any, any other words now. So, yeah. Look at them. Look beautiful. That's my fantastic signature. Quite a bit of branding right here. But you know what? I love it. I don't care. Now, pay attention. Keep practicing. Keep learning. Here we go. Let's talk. As you saw, that was great. That was really great. And that is finished. So, yes, I'll tell you something. Like my YouTube channel. A lot of experimentation will 
actually help you to explore many different subjects and uh, that's all you really need to do.